No matter where you live in the country, you're always fighting utility bills, whether it's up north fighting the cold or down south fighting the heat. Plus, in a lot of places, you're always facing natural disasters, be it earthquakes, tornadoes, or even hurricanes. Well, now you don't have to fight the bad weather or the high utility bills anymore because homes can be built out of ICFs, insulated concrete forms. You stack these up like giant building blocks, and then you pour concrete down in the foam for a stronger, more energy efficient home. Now, this home's already underway, and we're going to start building a wall right here and show you how to attach the form to our concrete foundation. Alan Hoffman is the general contractor on this home. Alan's applying a foam adhesive to the concrete slab right where the next form will go. So Alan, what does this foam really do when we set the block on top of it? Well, basically it's locking our block into place so that uh, we're marking the, the perimeter block for the slab as we carry the wall up. The weight of the concrete that we put inside the foam will really hold it in place. Yeah, and also the rebar wall anchors that we've got coming out of the slab. And this rebar you went ahead and put in when they poured the foundation? Yeah, they were wet set. Okay, now here we have some cavities inside there and you've got some steel pieces connecting it. You just put that uh -huh. around the rebar? Uh-huh. Just set it right here. We'll slide it into our tongue and groove. Sounds like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now as we build up our wall, do we just uh, keep stacking it on? Do we need to add foam or just keep stacking the blocks up? We just keep stacking the blocks. We bring in another corner, stack it here, and then follow. And then what we do is I stagger the cut. This block is alternating Okay. corner. So we won't have any seams lining up from row to row? Correct. Okay. And then uh, as, as we get to our right height, then we just kill it off where we want to stop? That's correct. Okay. Set your wall height and then we'll pour concrete in later, but we've got uh, a couple windows there and uh -huh. we need to put a door in there. Can you show me how that goes into the wall? Yeah. Now, one of the nice things about an ICF system is if you need to make a little room for a door frame or a window, it's easy to cut because it's just foam and you definitely want to cut it now because after the concrete's inside, it's a little more difficult. You ready to set our door frame in there? Yes. Okay, let me go ahead and tuck my end right in here. Okay. Now this door frame, is made out of like two by tens. Uh, so, so that means it's nine and a half inches wide. Is our wall that wide? Uh, yes. Uh, it's actually the block was designed to accommodate the width of the two by ten. Okay. And then after we put this in place, we'll just go ahead and attach it and then bring our blocks in on both sides against the door frame? Yeah, we'll build right around the doors and all the windows. Okay, and the windows we did the same way, except you set the window frame right on top of the foam block. Yeah, whatever your window height is off the slab. Okay. And then you put block above the door frames and the window frames and mm -hmm. pour in your concrete. Is there any problem with that actually uh, changing the shape of it? I mean, will the weight of the concrete push down on this? Yeah. These, actually, these, uh, this plywood we have here is to brace and keep it in square and then we'll also have vertical and horizontal bracing. While you pour the concrete and then remove the bracing and put your doors in after the concrete's right. set up. Right. And there's no problem with that settling over time and making the doors and windows hard oh, to open no. and close. No. Once uh, it's there's hard, a lot of steel hard. in that concrete. <laughs> okay. So it's set up. Well, we need our windows and doors to open and close. Now, the walls are super insulated, and so I guess your weak link in the chain would be the windows themselves. You need to get some energy efficient windows. Right. We recommend when, when someone's going to go with the system that they look at a whole package. Uh, from the attic insulation through the windows. And have a good HVAC system also. Right. Make sure everything's energy efficient. Yeah, it, it makes sense. They're spending a little bit more to do this and they really, you don't want to have, create a weak link. Yeah, and they're going to go ahead and save it anyway on the utility bill. Oh, aren't yeah. They? It'll pay for itself. Tremendous savings. There are about 50 different manufacturers of ICFs in the U.S., but the building principles are the same for all of them. Block systems are typically about four feet long and 12 to 16 inches high with edges that interlock. Flank systems are sometimes as long as 8 feet, and they're usually 8 to 12 inches high. Ties that fit into notches in the edges of the planks hold them together. Panel systems come in 4 by 8 foot sections or even larger. Built-in ties hold them evenly apart, and they're connected to each other with wire or glue. No matter what system you're working with, you can build ICF homes with ordinary tools construction crews use every day. The roof and interior walls are framed with lumber or steel and you simply route out channels in the foam to install your plumbing and wiring. Once the forms are filled with concrete, the foam stays in place to increase the insulation R value of the walls. You can get a thermal mass as high as R50 in some cases, depending on the exterior finish you choose. And you can cover them with any finish you like on the outside and normal drywall on the inside. 
The solid mass and relatively airtight homes ICFs create will keep the air inside at a much more consistent temperature throughout the day and night. ICF construction cuts down on the amount of energy needed for heating and cooling by about 30 to 40 percent. And you can install smaller, less expensive heating and cooling equipment when you're building your new home. These walls also provide incredible sound insulation, allowing as little as one-sixth the amount of noise to come into your home as the typical wood frame wall. So your home is going to be much quieter no matter what's going on outside. And speaking of the great outdoors, homes built with ICFs have established a track record of standing strong when all the stick-built houses around them are left in ruins by tornadoes, hurricanes, and other natural disasters. Well, besides having a safer and stronger home, you're also going to save money with ICF walls. The cost of the walls and the concrete adds about an additional 6% to the price of a home, so a $100,000 house would cost about $106,000. That $6,000 extra would raise your mortgage payments about $30 or $40 a month, but you're going to save approximately $100 a month on your utility bill. So it actually pays for the walls, plus you have some savings left over. And the homeowner on this house is getting an additional 30% off their homeowner's insurance because there's less chance of fire or problems due to a natural disaster. So if you're going to start a new house, take a look at ICF walls. <laughs>